Today, I uh, have the pleasure to interview Dr. Klaus Wilkie from the University of Texas. He uh, does his work in computational evolutionary biology, and his research interested, interests go from molecular evolution of viruses and biophysical mechanism of protein evolution. Uh, uh, first of all, thank you for agreeing to this interview. Sure, you're welcome. And uh, let's get right into it. Uh, since you do molecular evolution of viruses, why do you think it's important for us to understand how viruses evolve? So, it's important for us to understand how viruses evolve because they do it all the time. Almost any viral disease in some form or another is linked to viral evolution, right? So, uh, for example, if you think about influenza, influenza virus, the annual flu season, Every season it's a slightly different virus, so the virus has evolved from the last season. The virus evolves in response to our immune responses and we, we need a new vaccine every year to, to protect ourselves from this new evolved virus. So evolution and viruses go hand in hand. And do you think uh, studying viral evolution will help us uh, further down the road to uh, design smarter techniques to dealing with viruses, designing smarter uh, antivirals or vaccines? Yeah, I think so. So at a minimum, so since you mentioned antiviral drugs, so with antiviral drugs the problem that you have is, and I mean we've, we've seen this with HIV many times over, you have a drug and very quickly the virus evolves away from the drug. And so we really need a drug cocktail and in, in the HIV case that's widely accepted, that's how everybody does it, but this is really a universal principle that any antiviral drug probably will have to be in some way proved against evolution. So the, the viruses will generally evolve away from the drug very quickly if the drug works at all. And so any drug we develop, we also have to think about what can we do to make sure that the virus cannot just accumulate a few mutations and then escape the drug action. So do you think that at least for some viruses, can we will uh, someday will actually be able to uh, uh, get a strategies that will allow us to control them or the virus will always kind of outrun us and we'll have to find new strategies to try to uh, uh, win the battle again and it will uh, ha it's like a, a nurse race with no end in sight. Yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't think we, we can know this. So it's very interesting, I think, if you, if you look at influenza where we need a new vaccine every year and you look at the measles, the measles evolve almost as fast as influenza, but our vaccine is just fine, right? Yes. We have a vaccine, it works, it has been working for decades. And so I think this is a topic that we still don't really understand. Why is it that for some viruses, it, doesn't seem to be a big deal. We have a vaccine and it, it just works. And for other viruses, we have to deal with this constant evolution. That's certainly one of the unsolved problems still to figure out which viruses and under what conditions will evolve away from a vaccine or a drug and which will not. Yes, of course. Uh, and also, especially for influenza, since we have the issue of having to uh, come up with a new vaccine every year, there's been an interest in uh, trying to predict which is going to be the next strain. Uh, and there is no uh, clear answer because some years the vaccines are not a good match. Uh, what a strategy do you think will work best uh, towards this is to change the way we are thinking about this vaccine, the way we are making it is uh, inherently have this problem and, and do you think we might probably need, will need to think of a vaccine that is targeted against a different uh, viral protein or do you think it's good enough that the strategy we have now that it, it's uh, probably a better use of our, uh, of our resources to focus on other viruses for which we don't have vaccines yet? 
No, I think there's, I mean, the influenza vaccine works quite well, but there's also still a lot of room for improvement. And there's, there's fundamentally, I think, two ways that it could work in the future. One is maybe at some point we can find a vaccine that is just universal and it works, or maybe it works at least for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. Uh, we don't have that yet, but there's people are working on this and uh, trying to find ways to make that and there's some ideas how it could work. And the other is, so prediction works, right? We can predict, but we can't predict that far out. We're actually pretty good at predicting three to six months for influenza. We're not that good predicting a year or two years. And currently, the, the whole vaccine production cycle takes about a year. Right in, in January or February of one year they decide for the vaccine that then will be used in the fall of the next year. So if we could somehow speed that up, if for example we could wait until May or, or June to, to make the call of what will be the vaccine that will be used in the fall, then of course we would only have to predict for six months and we'd be much better at that. So that actually is purely a question of can we somehow improve the vaccine design methods, can we speed up? It's an engineering problem really more than a virology problem. Uh, well, uh, changing a little bit of topic, uh, since uh, uh, emergence uh, diseases and viral emergent diseases are uh, such a hot topic, uh, right now there is a lot of interest for uh, people that are still uh, in the process of training themselves in bachelor's or uh, PhD, getting their bachelor's or PhD degree. Um, what is the... Uh, uh, there is obviously a need of uh, all these professionals to be trained somewhat in uh, viral evolution, so they are more aware of what is the importance of viral evolution for all the field as a whole, for uh, medical virology, for clinical virology. Uh, so, what do you think are the, your recommendations for um, uh, these young scientists uh, for the skills and also the, um, the abilities or the training they will need to acquire to uh, insert themselves into this field? That's a complicated question. I, I, I don't really know the answer. I, I think that there's many different ways that one can make a contribution. You know, I, I'm a computational scientist and what I'm really good at is programming a computer and, and looking at data and trying to find patterns. But if you're interested, say, in emerging diseases, you also need people that go out into the jungle and survey the animals. And that's a completely different skill set, right? And that would not be me, but some other people might be really good at that. So I think uh, I, I wouldn't tell people that they really have to do one thing or another thing. I think they should find the areas of science that they're interested in. Uh, probably these days everybody needs a little bit of computational background. It's, it's very difficult. It's so easy to measure things and accumulate data now. And if you don't have some basic skills and then computation, it will be difficult to analyze the data. But beyond that, somebody has more an interest in field like the outside world and animals and so on there's interesting things going on there right and if somebody's really into biochemistry and wants to study proteins and their interactions there's room there and if somebody's interested in computer algorithms and math there's room there so there's many different angles and we need all of those sure of course uh, and uh, finally i I would uh, like to ask also, how do you think studying viruses and studying this process on of, of, of viruses have helped us to understand how evolution works? So I actually came into viruses because I was interested in evolution. I'm first an evolutionary biologist and second a virologist to the extent that I can even call myself that. Um, so viruses are one of the great systems to study evolution because it happens so quickly, right? And they're not the only system, bacteria are also very quick, but in general, any organism that is very small and replicates very fast, evolves very quickly and allows us to study evolution in action as it happens. And, and viruses are one of the great systems for that. Uh, 
Uh, well, on behalf of the Red Mexicana de Virología, I thank you for your time and I really appreciate you uh, giving us the opportunity to interview you. You're welcome, it was a pleasure. Thanks. Mm -hmm.